Oh. Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. So, happy new year. It's 1st of January, 2021. Well, technically it's the 31st of December right now while I'm filming this, but it'll be the new year by the time you, <laughs> by the time you watch this. Um, I hope everybody's keeping safe and well wherever you are in the world. Yeah, I reckon we will probably have another few months of COVID times ahead of us, but hopefully it won't be too much longer before we can, uh, we can get back to a bit of normality. I just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who's ever watched any one of my videos, everyone who's subscribed. My channel went from 300 subscribers to over 8,000 in the space of a year over 2020. And I never thought I'd reach that many people. And it's just crazy uh, to think that 8,000, what is it? 8,156 people. <laughs> have clicked the subscribe button. This YouTube channel has changed my life and brought so many cool opportunities and uh, experiences my way. And I'm really looking forward to doing more in 2021. So for the first video in 2021, I thought I would do a studio tour. A lot of you guys have been DMing me on Instagram and asking me what kind of setup I've got going on here. What I thought I'd do is just show you guys around and show you the space that I'm working in pretty much every day. One small side story is that at the start of 2020, I had planned on actually relocating to London, which I still might do. Everything is up in the air at the moment, of course, due to COVID-19 and Brexit and uh, lots of other factors in the world. But this is the space that I'm going to be in for at least the first half of 2021. And I thought I'd just show you guys around and uh, ease into the new year. So this is my desk space. This is pretty much what I look at every single day when I'm working out here. Using two Acer 27 inch monitors. They're not matched or anything, which they probably should be for video editing and stuff, but uh, for music production, they're absolutely fine. Absolute game changer for workflow. Just being able to have different programs on the two different windows is really, really handy. For studio monitors, I'm using the Atom A7Xs. Got these about a year and a half ago. They're like my first proper set of studio monitors. They've got the ribbon tweeter, so the high-end detail is really, really good. I do find them a little bit harsh when I'm working on them for hours and hours, but it just reminds me to take a break, which is uh, something I definitely don't do enough of. For my audio interface, I'm using the Focusrite Claret 4 Pre at the moment. I do think I'll update this to a universal audio interface in the near future. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out which one suits my needs the best. Will I go rack mount or will I stay with the desktop format? But yeah, Focusrite for now, really, really good. I've got an Akai MPK-225 MIDI keyboard. If I'm doing some sound design, uh, making some presets, or if I'm just putting in a simple keyboard part, it's really handy to just have one in front of me at all times. I actually didn't use these for the longest time, the little encoders on it, but I have actually really started to use them a lot. I nearly fell over there, sorry. I've actually started using these quite a lot in Ableton to control drum racks. I find actually being a little bit more hands-on with my automation and my uh, creative side of production to be a lot more fun than just clicking in automation and stuff. So I actually have a video on my Ableton template for 2021, which I will definitely upload soon. Microphone is my trusty Shure SM7B. I've got it mounted to this, um, can't remember the name of it, but it's the Rode podcast arm. It's really handy. I can just basically move the mic wherever I need it to go. I'm using a Triton Fethead as an inline preamp, basically to just boost the gain. The SM7B is absolutely like notorious for having like a really low output gain. So basically I'm just using this to boost the level so I get a nice clean level without too much noise. Water bottle just to keep hydrated. Now I didn't think I'd include this in the video, but this is actually really important. This is the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. I used to use just a really generic cheap computer mouse. Me being a guitar player too, I've had some problems with my hands in the past. So I thought because I'm going to be doing quite a lot of like video editing for YouTube and obviously I do a huge amount of computer work with uh, my production, I thought it would be a good idea to invest in a good quality ergonomic mouse. When I bought this, it actually took me a long time to get used to it. I was obviously just used to the posture of the old mouse, but after a while, pretty much all of my hand problems went away. Yeah, I think it's really, really important to invest in a, in a mouse if you're going to be spending a lot of time on a computer. Speaking of which, 
this is my computer. So this is a custom PC from the guys over at Scan Audio in the UK. 3XS systems. For all the nerds out there who want to know, I'll put the specs up on the screen here so you can see what's going on inside. Yeah, so I'm running Windows here in the studio, but I've got a MacBook Pro as well. Before we take a look at the rack and some of the guitar stuff, over here I've got a Novation Impulse 49, 49 key keyboard. Yeah, it's just super handy to have a larger keyboard if I want to play some more piano based bits. Uh, I'm not even a great keyboard player, but it's super handy to have. This is here for when I'm working in my setup, but if I've got a client over or if I'm in a session or something like that, this keyboard basically goes over somewhere else in the room for other people to play. Up here I've got a Korg Monolog, analog synth. It's monophonic, so you can only play one note at a time, but it's absolutely incredible for like bass sounds um, or just any kind of crazy sound design stuff. So I usually sequence this from Ableton via USB, or if I want to get creative with it, I actually run it through some effects pedals and stuff and then run it into my DAW. So it's really handy for just kind of creative effects and stuff. It also has an audio input, which is really cool because you can run like guitars and basses through the filter. And yeah, sounds really cool. Okay, so back over here, this is the rack. So first up, I've got a Studio Spares power conditioner. Basically runs power to the rack gear, to the computer, to the studio monitors. Basically with one switch, I can turn everything on, which is really handy. Next up, I've got a Line 6 Helix rack. I wanna say a huge, huge thank you to Line 6 for sending this over for me to check out. I've been having a huge amount of fun exploring this. I've been using the Line 6 HX stamp for quite a while and the full Helix is just a whole other level. It's uh, it's amazing. I've got a full video on the Helix coming very, very soon, but I just wanted to spend a bit of time with the unit before I, uh, before I upload anything. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Next, I've got a drawer just with loads of USB cables and headphone amps and just little handy bits for the studio. You never have enough USB cables. Below that, I've got another rack unit, and this is basically my live playback rig. So I do quite a bit of MD work, and pre-pandemic, of course, uh, I've been on a few gigs where I've had to prepare backing tracks and uh, basically have a robust playback system. I actually got to use this rig uh, for one of my friend Dervlin McLean's live stream gigs during the year. It was like one of the only gigs I got to do in 2020. If you want to check that out, I'll link that above and in the description below. And also, yeah, let me know if you want a full video on this playback rig and how I do Ableton stuff because I don't get to use it as much these days, but it is pretty fun. And down below, I've got a Focusrite 18i20, one of the first generation ones. Uh, this was like my first big audio interface. On the floor, I've got a Helix control, which basically controls the Helix rack. Thank you again, line six. And lastly, up on top of the rack, I've got this little pedal board. I used this pedal board and this power supply for years for just like a simple grab and go pedal board with like four or five pedals on it. But these days I'm just using it as like a simple clean power supply for any studio pedals. I've got that connected at all times so that I can power any pedals I'm testing out or doing a demo of. You can see here, oh, hello. I've got a loan of a Thorpey the Veteran fuzz pedal. I've got this on loan from a good friend, Dundee, who has actually given me a loan of quite a lot of stuff, which I'll show in a second. But yeah, testing this out for a while, really, really cool. Also testing out the C4 synth from Source Audio. I'm doing a video on this soon as well, so keep an eye out for that too. So that's pretty much it for the rack setup. Let's have a look at some guitar stuff. This is a Blackstar Series 145. This was pretty much my first big valve amp. I'd been using like solid state practice amps for years and when I started taking music a bit more seriously um, this was like my first proper amp and yeah I don't gig it as much these days because it's really really heavy and quite hard to <laughs> carry around. Also there are no gigs but yeah it's a four channel amp which is kind of crazy um, but what's really nice is it's got the two clean channels on it. There's like a bright clean and a warm clean basically kind of class A class A, B style preamps, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's just a really versatile studio amp and I uh, use it for clean stuff quite a lot. Up top here, I've got a Ryan Blues Reverb amp. This is not mine. This is on loan from Dundee, same guy who gave me a loan of the Harpy and many other things that you'll see in this space. Thank you so much, Dundee. So Ryan amps are actually custom made here in Ireland. This is basically a 60 watt Fender style 
clean amp. Got a sign in case I ever forget where I am. Very handy. Uh, got a shaker just for shaky bits. Uh, here I've got the Fender Acoustasonic Strat. Uh, again, thank you to Fender for sending this over. I've made a video on this guitar kind of showing off the versatility of it in a production and a recording setting. So I'll link that in the description if you want to check that out. But yeah, Fender Acoustasonic, really cool guitar and absolutely love it. On the floor here, I've got some pedals. Um, I'm basically planning out a pedal board build for 2021. I'm going to document the whole thing on the YouTube channel as well. Lots to plan, lots to figure out, but yeah, I'm just kind of testing out some sizes and want to see basically how much I can fit on the smallest pedal board possible. Got the Line 6 HX Stamp, best pedal ever made. Uh, Earthquaker Devices Hoof, which is an amazing fuzz. I've got the Green Rhino from Way Huge, which is like a Tube Screamer style pedal. Wampler Euphoria, not sure if I'll use that on the board, but incredible overdrive, and I do use that in the studio quite a lot. <laughs> the old classic Boss DD7 Digital Delay, this was like my second pedal ever. Um, there's a really nice DM2 style, DM2 modeled uh, mode on it, which is really cool for like those analog delays. Also, classic MXR carbon copy. I can't think of any guitar player who hasn't played one of these. Polytune 2, little tuner, got a nice uh, small boss volume pedal. So over here I've got a little mini pedal board that I've been playing with for the last couple of days. Basically just trying out different combinations of pedals and um, yeah just messing around. So first off I've got the Exotic SB compressor. Really really good. I love uh, compressors for clean tones. Next up I've got the Source Audio EQ2. This is absolutely incredible. I've got a video coming on this pretty soon as well. It's like a Swiss Army knife for your pedal board. Everyone needs an EQ on their pedal board. Next up, if my camera will focus, there we go. This is the Ryra clone. I'm using it mostly as like a clean boost as opposed to a gain pedal. Um, just to boost clean tones, especially when using single coils, it's really, really good for that. Yeah, so that's the Ryra clone. This is my present from Santa this year. This is the Boss CE2W. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I absolutely love 80s clean guitar tones and stuff. So this is my first like dedicated chorus pedal. You can't beat those real bucket brigade chips. Just sounds absolutely incredible. Lastly here, I've got the Source Audio Collider Delay and Reverb. Um, got this a few months ago as well, and I absolutely love it. Delay on one side and reverb on the other side. And yeah, this is definitely going on my pedal board. So over here, I've got a Victory V40 head and 1x12 cab. Below it, I've got my own Zilla 1x12 cab. Uh, that's got a V30 speaker in it, and the Victory has a 1x12 Creamback speaker in it. The Victory is on loan from Dundee again. Thank you so much, Dundee. You've given me a loan of so much incredible gear over the years, and uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. So yeah, this is the Victory V40 head. I'm definitely going to get one of these for myself because it's just such a great, clean pedalboard platform, and it's so small, which is really, really handy when you're gigging when gigs come back, of course. Over here, I've just got some miscellaneous pedals and bits and bobs that I've had over the years, camera light. Next up, I've got a bright orange couch from Ikea, which is absolutely essential, of course. Um, got a Mexican Telecaster. This is my main guitar for years and years. Still love it to bits, so there's that. I've got a laptop stand that I forgot to tidy away before I shot the video, there's that. Um, let me see if I can show you this. This is the IKEA lamp that I'm pretty sure every single person owns on the planet. Little radiator to keep myself warm and all the instruments because it actually gets quite cold out here. Then, these guys. Um, yeah, once again, Dundee, thank you so, so much for a loan of these. I'm never going to be able to afford these. These are just absolutely incredible. Um, thank you so much for even trusting me to, to, to play with these for a while. Two 100 watt Marshall heads, 1971, the others are 1972 as far as I'm aware. Super lead and super bass. These used to be, uh, well the cabinet used to be inside in the live room and the heads used to be over here on top of the Black Star. Um, but yeah, these are the Marshalls. Next up we've got all these guitars. I've got my trusty Soar. I don't know if this will focus. Um, this is like my main guitar. I got this when I started studying music in college and it's just such a versatile guitar. I love it to bits. Next up, I've got um, an Epiphone Les Paul Custom. This was like my first proper guitar after this guy, <laughs> an old Squire. But yeah, I love this guitar. A lot of sentimental value in this guy. My acoustic is this Guild here. Um, it's got a mahogany body, a neck, 
the whole lot. Um, very kind of big, folky, dreadnought style acoustic. Doesn't work for everything, but it's, yeah, sounds really, really cool. Bass here is an old Squire P bass that I don't use all that much anymore because I got this guy. This is a Sire uh, V7 Marcus Miller bass. Uh, it's basically a jazz bass. Very handy to have in a studio. As I said, got my Squire Strat. It's my first uh, electric guitar I ever got, so keep that lying around. Behind the desk, I've got this big spaghetti cable mess, which I'm pretty sure every producer musician can uh, can uh, can understand. Before I show you the little live room, I've got this Lynx Stage Pro box here. Basically, eight XLR outs, two XLRs into the room, and two speaker ins and outs to the room, so I can run amps in here and cabinets in here, which is basically what I do. So let's show you what's going on here. Right. Yeah, I've got a acoustic panel that just fell off the wall. Great. Throw that up there. For the cab, I'm using a Blackstar 4x12. This has four Celestian V30 speakers in it, which is really nice. I kind of got this in my heavy metal days. So this is quite a modern V30 speaker sound. I use this quite a lot for when I'm running uh, amps through the live room. Usually use a SM57, single SM57 on the cab works most of the time for me in this room. And yeah, sounds really nice. Beyond cabinet duties, this room has kind of turned into a bit of a, a storage mess. But yeah, I kind of hope to tidy this space up a little bit and uh, use it a bit more for other things. You can't really record drums in here, but it is really good for vocals and for guitar recording, which is what I use it for most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's the live room. All right, so that was a quick look at my home studio setup for 2021. Obviously, I've got some gear in rotation and on loan, like I've got to give the Ryan, the Victory and the Marshalls back to Dundee soon. But, but yeah, basically everything else, that's my setup. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the space in the comments. If you want to support me and see some more content from me, please consider subscribing as well so you can follow me throughout my YouTube journey in 2021. Happy New Year again. Hope you have a great 2021 wherever possible. And hopefully it won't be too much longer before we're out of this whole COVID-19 thing. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.